So, let's go back to the story. The next section of the story, we just went through angels asking their question, yeah? And they told, they, they asked with the proper mannerism, and that was the point that I really wanted to hit home. The next ayah of the story, Allah says, وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا Allah taught Adam the names, all of them. Al-asma'a kullaha. This is called a tawqeed in Arabic. But it's actually, see, even something more than that. It's a combination of tawqeed and mashghul anhu. These are grammatical terms. Here's what they mean in English. Allah taught Adam alayhi salam all manner of names, leaving nothing at all out. And the word names, this is a translation of the word asma. Asma in Arabic is translated into what? Names in English. Except asma in Arabic from wasm actually also means qualities. It doesn't just mean names, it also means what? Qualities. That's why we say that the names of Allah are al asma ul husna. Whoa. Was that a whistle? Or a scream? I can't. That was a scream. That was intense. Okay. So the names of Allah are actually the qualities of Allah, aren't they? They're attributes of Allah. And they're still, they're not called awsafullah, they're called asma'ullah, the names of Allah. Adam alayhi salam was taught the names of all kinds of things, all the names that might exist, and all the qualities that might exist. Now you know what this is referring to? This is actually referring to Adam alayhi salam being taught language. There's a few points that you guys need to internalize inshaAllah ta'ala about this. All language boils down to nouns. Linguists argue that the first act of language is nouns because a child interacts with an object, hopefully not this object, but a child interacts with an object and tries to identify it. And the act of identification is the act of giving something a noun, a name, right? And that's true not just of one language, that is true of what? All languages. The first creature that was taught this massive vocabulary is Adam alayhi salam. All of us are children of Adam alayhi salam, and all of us come from different ethnicities, different backgrounds, different languages. Every one of those languages is actually a child of what was given to Adam alayhi salam. And Adam alayhi salam himself is actually being given these words by Allah. You know what that means then? Every single language that exists on the face of the earth is part of Allah's revelation. There is not a language that exists on the earth that human beings speak that is not from Him Himself. Because all languages go back to parents, which go back to further parents, which go back to further parents, and eventually where do you end up? Adam alayhi salam. If you realize that, then the conclusion that follows is every language is supposed to be honored. Because it's taught by Allah. You shouldn't make fun of any other person's language. You shouldn't make fun of their dialect, even though they're seriously funny sometimes. It becomes really hard not to make fun of certain dialects on occasion. You know? But you have to hold it back, even if it sounds strange to you. And you cannot put people down for the language that they speak. You cannot make fun of people for the language that they speak. Because all of them go back to Allah Azza wa That's the first implication. Here's the second really remarkable implication. I will try to see in the audience, how many people studying the sciences, any science? Computer science, biology, chemistry, okay. How many people studying history? <laughs> like three. How did, how did your parents let that happen? We're supposed to be studying history, by the way, but not, not if you're Desi. What are you going to do with that? You know? So anyway, every time you master a science, or you do further studies in a science, it is made up of terminology, isn't it? Physics has its own terminology, chemistry has its own terminology, history has its own terminology, Find the world of finance has its own terminology, they all have their own words, their own nouns. In other words, what was given to Adam alayhi salam is the basis of all human intellectual development. All of it handed to this man, so he can pass it down. 
As a matter of fact, there were people four or five hundred years ago in the field of chemistry, they jotted some things down, they gave certain labels to things, they developed some concepts of chem in chemistry, and the next generation of people came and took it a step further, then the next came and took it a step further. But you cannot take the next step unless the people before gave certain terminologies to define things. That's how every science in the world progresses. You know what I'm trying to get at? I'm trying to get at the fact that the development of human knowledge in every field, in every field, is actually part of the plan of Allah that began with Adam alayhi salam. So when a young student comes up to me and says, Ustav, I'm studying in the university, but I don't want to study dunya, I want to study deen. I don't know, my parents want me to study, just get university, you know, learn from these kuffar the sciences, but I, this is all for dunya, I want akhirah. Then I say to him, you should actually go to acting school, you're pretty good. But also, but also that when you are studying physics or chemistry or biology or medicine or whatever else, you're actually continuing to study what was given to who? Adam alayhi salam. How are you calling this? This has nothing to do with Allah, and the study of deen has everything to do with Allah. You came up with that division yourself. That is not the division of the Book of Allah. The Book of Allah actually wants human beings to dive and, and learn about the earth, to learn about the origins of creation, to explore. وَاسْتَعْمَرَكُمْ fiha. In modern Arabic, the word istamara actually means to colonize. But in old Arabic, it means Allah put you on the earth and He wanted you to develop and enhance and grow and mature the earth. How do you enhance the world if you don't enhance the sciences? If you don't enhance human knowledge? That is how human beings enhance the world. Agriculture happened because human beings figured out how to irrigate water. And agriculture is the first act of human civilization. From there, when roads are developed, cities are developed, architecture is developed, none of these things happen if you don't learn the sciences. Why were the Muslims incredible architects? These masajid, where did they come from? If you don't know architecture, if you don't know science. So we've now developed this secular knowledge versus religious knowledge, this division. What I'm trying to get at is, in the story of Adam alayhi salam, Allah actually gave him what you call secular knowledge first. He actually didn't even mention anything about revelation yet. He didn't mention anything about worship yet. He says he taught Adam alayhi salam the names of every sort of thing, every single thing. Subhanallah. The point the ummah has reached in our intellectual stagnation, that we have divided the knowledge of religion, the knowledge of revelation from the knowledge of creation. And yet Adam alayhi salam was given the honor of studying the knowledge of creation. The knowledge of things, all kinds of things, all manner of things. And by the way, subhanallah, وَعَلَّمَا آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّ الْخَلْقِ Adam alayhi salam was taught the names of all kinds of creation. No, kullaha, all the names. Allah didn't even want to restrict it to creation. Maybe Adam alayhi salam was even taught abstract ideas, concepts. Even that, he was given the potential to think not only in physical terms, but in abstract terms. It's remarkable what Adam alayhi salam was given. And as a result, what you've been given. Some of you are extremely creative. Some of you are really good with the arts. Some of you are very poetic. Some of you have a real, like, real knack for history. Some of you others, are, they're amazing at language and linguistics. Others are really good at foreign languages. Others are really good in the, in the sciences. Others are good at medicine. You know whatever you're good at, that is actually a fraction you've inherited from Adam alayhi salam. This is a part of revelation passed down to you. It's awesome. Don't deny it. Don't think it's against the deen. When you're good at something, it's a gift from Allah. It's been passed down to you. That's the first bit that I wanted to share with you. The second thing, the second meaning of this is so awesome. And it'll help tie the entire story together, I hope. Listen to this narration carefully. I'm not gonna give you the isnad or the chain of narration for the text that I'm gonna share with you because that'll take too long. But I will post them up on Bayina TV. I'll put, put all this stuff up so that you guys see where these texts came from, inshaAllah ta'ala. But they're all sahih. 
لما خلق الله تعالى آدم عليه السلام ومسح ظهره فسقط من ظهره كل نسمة هو خالقها من ذريته إلى يوم القيامة فجعل بين عيني كل إنسان منهم وبيصا من نور ثم عرضهم على آدم فقال أي رب من هؤلاء قال هؤلاء ذريتك What a beautiful hadith the Prophet ﷺ tells us that when Allah created Adam السلام, he took from his back and from his loins, he took out his entire future lineage of every single member of every population on the earth was actually already pre-created. And all of us were presented before Adam السلام, I was there, you were there, your kids were there, your grandparents were there. Every one of us was there. And Adam السلام, is in shock. E ay rab, man haula. My master, who are these people? He said, these are your kids. These are your kids. Now look at this ayah. Allah taught Adam the names of what? Which names? All the names. Guess what? Adam knows my name, alayhi salam. Adam yours knows your name. Adam knows the name of your kids. He knows the name of your parents and their parents. And who taught him those names? Allah did. Allah taught Adam alayhi salam every single child of Adam's name. What did I say? What does the word ism mean? Does it only mean name? Does it also mean quality? Oh my God! Adam alayhi salam knows the people that have a short temper, their quality. Allah knows that Fatima is actually really smart and very artistic. He also knows that Karim is really mathematical, but also gets a little hasty sometimes. He knows your names and he knows your what? Your qualities like a good father should. Like a good father should. Adam alayhi salam was given something amazing. That must have taken a while. That must have taken a while. <laughs> like getting to know one person takes a while. Like I don't think I still know my wife. <laughs> I do this to her all the time. Who, who are you? She goes, the question is, who are you? Anyway, she's watching this, I'm so dead tonight. Anyway. <laughs> now listen. Allah describes, it's so beautiful. In Allah khalaqa Adam min qabdatin qabadaha min jami'i al-ard. Allah just created Adam alayhi salam with a handful of dirt that was taken from all of the earth. So you know there are some dark patches of soil, light patches of soil, you know, uh, crusty soil, all kinds of soil. A, a, a fistful of soil that had a sample from every kind of soil on the earth. And then he says, فَجَاءَ بَنُوا عَادَمْ عَلَىٰ قَدَرِ الْأَرْضِ جَاءَ مِنْهُمُ الْأَحْمَارِ وَالْأَبْيَاضِ وَالْأَسْوَادِ وَبَيْنَ ذَلِكَ And that's why from the children of Adam came black and white and red and freckled and clear-skinned. All of them came. And then he says, صلى الله عليه وسلم, والسهل والحزن والخبيث والطيب. And what came from his from his children are easygoing people, chill, relaxed people, like the Malaysians. You know, they're just relaxed. You just go there, you feel relaxed. You know, والحزن and depressed people, like Pakistanis. <laughs> like just go near them, you're like, ah, oh, you know, والحزن. وَالْخَبِيثِ and filthy people, I no comment, no comment. وَالطَّيِّبِ <laughs> good and pure people, like the Bangladeshis. I love them. I do. Some of the Bangladeshi guys are like, yes, it is true, you are all dirty. Anyway, <laughs> but anyway, all kinds of people were brought from the dirt, from the dirt. You know, it's so beautiful, because when Allah describes human beings are created from dirt, it looks like nothing, it looks like something dirty. But life on this earth of every color, every color of flower, every kind of fruit, every kind of tree comes out of what? The dirt. The dirt is capable of amazing things. If you give it some water. You know what that means? Human beings may not look like much. You may not think you're worth much. But man, what you can produce with the addition of what? Some what? Some water. That doesn't mean go take a shower. Let me tell you what it means. Some, the addition of some water means the inspiration of revelation. The Qur'an compares water to the Qur'an. Human beings that are made of dirt, their water is the Qur'an. And when they are inspired by the Qur'an, the amazing beautiful fruits that they'll produce, the source of shade and comfort and beauty that they will become, the nourishment for the earth that they will become is beyond imagination. 
It's beyond imagination. That's why we we're created from dirt. Because of our incredible potential. And Allah Azza wa Jalla gave Adam alayhi salam all of this. All of this. All of the kids and all of their potentials. And what kind of dirt they're gonna be made of. And what kind of personalities they're gonna have. This is so beautiful. Because then you appreciate, especially those of you that are students of the Arabic language. وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا ثُمَّ عَرَضَ هُمْ هُمْ the word ha is used for non-human things. But hum is used for humans. Immediately, you know, in English it just says, all, he taught him the names all of them. Then he presented them before the angels. So the word them in English is the same. But in Arabic, one of the words, one time the word them is used, it's ha. And the other time the word them is used, it's hum. It's why is it hum? It's only used for human beings. Because he was given the names of human beings. And then these same human beings were presented before the angels.